All right, uh, welcome back. What we're going to be looking at today is the application of quadratic functions. Um, up until this point, what we have done is looked at what quadratic functions may look like in vertex form. Uh, vertex form is the form, again, y is equal to a times x minus p squared plus q. Uh, and we've also looked at how to go from a graph or information about a graph into vertex form. Uh, what we're going to look at now is how to apply some of that knowledge to uh, practical application problems. So this problem says the cables of a suspension bridge hang in a curve which approximates a parabola. The supporting towers are 450 meters apart and 40 meters tall. The cables are attached to the top of each tower and the lowest point of the cables is 2 meters above the road. Part A says determine a quadratic function that describes the shape of the cables. All right, before we do that, let's look at what this problem might look like. Uh, so if we thought about what the road might be, or where the road might be, uh, here's a road. We have two towers that are each 40 meters tall and 450 meters apart. So if I was to draw this problem, here's the supporting towers. Uh, they are each 40 meters tall, 450 meters apart. And we have this cable. <clears throat> between the two towers that has a height of two meters from the road to the bottom. Okay, so uh, here's all the values that we're looking at here. Uh, now before we can actually represent this in vertex form or determine a quadratic function, uh, we have to somehow place this on the x and y axis. At this point, we don't have that. It's not given to us. So we get to choose actually where this is going to be. Uh, my suggestion is that we play, place the x and the y axis. I'm just going to grab it from down here uh, <clears throat> on the road and in the middle of the suspension. So what I mean by that is I am going to place my problem and my x and y axis right here. Uh, what we'll look at later is... Um, if we put the x and y axis somewhere else, how that will affect the problem. But here's my decision. All right. So in order to represent this function, what we need to do is know what the vertex is and a particular through point. Uh, my vertex here, according to where I've decided uh, to place my <clears throat> origin, my vertex is at the point 0, 2. And my through points, which are any other points on my quadratic function, uh, in this case, would be at 225 and 40, and negative 225 and 40. So let's use some of the knowledge we know previously to come up with <clears throat> what this quadratic function may look like in vertex form. All right. So... In order to do that, uh, we start with the vertex, with our vertex being at 0, 2. We know that our function is y is equal to a times x plus 0 squared plus 2. And using either of our through points, I'm going to use the through point uh, 225 and 40. We can find our value for a. So 40 is equal to a times 225 squared plus 2. Uh, 225 squared is... 50,625, then plus 2, subtract 2, and we have 38 is equal to 50,625a. So we'll finally get a value of a of 38,50,625. So our function to represent, in other words, our answer to a, our function to represent this would be so an answer to A, uh, Y is equal to 385,625 uh, X squared, or X plus 0 squared. We don't need the plus 0, plus 2. That's our answer to A. Uh, the question for B says, determine the height of the cables at a point 50 meters from one of the towers. So 50 meters from one of the towers would be either 50 meters from this tower or 50 meters from the right tower. 
Now we're going to have to, in order to determine any point on this quadratic function, uh, we can determine that using the quadratic function itself. You can give an, an input or an output and solve for the other coordinate and that will give you one of the points. In this particular case, uh, since we're looking at a point 50 meters from one of the towers, the actual distance from the y-axis to those points would be, because this is what we're looking at here, uh, you could either say it's going to be 175 meters uh, to, the, to the right of the y-axis or 175 meters to the left. So the points that we're looking at, either here or here, would be either 175 and some height or negative. 175 and some height. In order to find out that height, all we need to do is use the function that we've already determined and substitute 175 or negative 175 in for x. So in our answer to b, uh, we're going to input 175 in for x, uh, 175 squared. Now we're just going to perform uh, bed mass in order to simplify this. 175 squared is 30,625. <clears throat> and finally, what I would do is, maybe I'll even show you on the calculator here, just be careful about your order of operations. I'm going to start by dividing the fraction. So 38 divided by 50,625. Hit enter. Uh, times that by 30,625, hit enter, and then add 2. So that height above the road looks to be 24.99 to two decimal places meters. Okay, uh, That's it for the answer. Some of the difficulties if we had decided to place the origin elsewhere. Let me show you uh, one of the difficulties. I'm just going to erase a whole bunch of stuff here. So we're done the question, but just to show you if you had decided to put your origin maybe at the vertex, how that would change things and what that would do. All right. So uh, if we had decided to place our origin right at the vertex, Here's what would happen. So I'm grabbing the origin, and I'm going to place it right at the vertex. How that would change things is that now our final answer for part A, it would not change the value of A in the vertex form, but it would change the value of Q in particular, because our vertex is now at 0, 0. And we would have had to use through points of, for example, 225 and 38, because it is, we need to subtract 2 because the road is actually below our x-axis. Uh, but our final answer for A would now look like this, because our vertex is not up 2 anymore. It's at 0, 0. Uh, we would still substitute 175 in for part B, but we wouldn't have the plus 2 thing here. We wouldn't have the plus 2. And we get a final answer for Y of being 22.99, which is actually a, an incorrect answer. Uh, because the road is now below this x-axis by 2, when we get a distance of 22.99 and it asks us what's the distance, uh, determine the height of the cables above the road, we need to finally add, we have to know to add, this 2 meters. So that's what makes this a little bit more difficult if you don't place the x-axis on the road. Totally possible, uh, but just a little bit more difficult.